Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that was a tune called Alianza, and it's a Latin tune, a Latin slash swing tune, from the book Sitting In with the Big Band. So this is part three of this series. I did two straight ahead tunes, actually one in 3-4, the last one was in 3-4, and this is a Latin jazz tune going from a mambo into straight ahead swing. Uh, this is the most complicated one yet, it's a lot of hits. I've written in a lot of figures, like I said in that part two. I usually grab the lead alto and the lead trumpet part and write in figures. Here I just listened and transcribed them on the parts. I'll put down the screen so you can see it. And also at the end of the video, I'll show the chart uh, with another performance so you can go, go through it there. I just wanted you to listen to it first before you're actually looking at the music. Sometimes that really helps. Now, one thing I did want to mention for this particular video is lots of times when you play with a big band, it's great to read the charts for a while, but then I always put them away and try to use my ears. A lot of times you just end up staring at the chart constantly, and then you're never really listening to what you're doing and the rest of the musicians are doing. So I always kind of tell my students to put it away. Sometimes I just take it away from them, so they have to you know, use their ears. That's really the most important thing is to always use your ears when you're doing this. So like I said, this chart goes between a Latin feel and a swing feel. And one thing that you should know and you should try to do is set that up. So when you're changing feels, you need to do just a little bit of a fill in that style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play four bars of a mamba groove and then do a little swing fill, which will have a little bit of a bounce like this. And then go into that feel for four bars and then do a straight eighth fill and go back into the mambo. So you see, as I go into the next feel, I do a very short fill. You can do two beats. You can do a whole bar if you want. Just make sure you're not stepping on the other horn players. Now, I've switched up some cymbals for this particular uh, tune. Like I said in my other videos, sometimes I use some heavier cymbals when I play Latin jazz and also some smaller ones. So this is a 22-inch Paiste traditional ride that has a nice bell. That K that I have is great, but sometimes it just doesn't cut through especially the bell for this music. And also I have a 17-inch uh, traditional crash, thin, and a 16-inch crash. A lot of these figures need to be a little drier, so these fall off pretty quickly. So they're not going to ring as long as a heavier crash. Some of the old Ks, they just ring forever. So that's something you might want to consider. Now, the Latin part of this stuff should be pretty dry. Uh, in, in general, that kind of drumming is drier. We're not talking about a lot of cymbals. They're ma mainly for accents. And then the jazz part is going to be obviously be riding on that cymbal. It's going to be a little wetter. Now, you can use closed hi-hat or cowbell if you want. Here, I'm just using the bell of the ride for, that, for those grooves. The beginning uh, of this, the way it's written, is a little deceptive. It's written with these uh, kind of written out exactly how they want it. Uh, but that's not the way I think you should play it. I think you should play time through the beginning like I'm doing and kind of solo. So this is how that sounds. One, two. So that's the first eight bars or so. Uh, and I'm, you know, sort of almost doing a little drum feature there. It's pretty exciting. Just make sure you're not stepping on the sax lines in between. Now I do let this um, swish slash china ring through that first bar of nine. I think it's good to have that little tail there. Uh, a drummer that influenced me a lot in this kind of Latin playing using this Chinese symbol was Steve Berrios, just an amazing drummer. Played with the Ford Apache band. He also had his own groups. I used to go watch them with Jerry Gonzalez and Andy Gonzalez and him and, and Larry Willis played piano. It was just an amazing band. And he had this cymbal. It kind of sounded similar to this. 
and I just love that symbol. So I like that sound for these big crashes, these big explosions here. Uh, the chart is very repetitive. That's the good news. So you you come back to this intro several times, probably four times, but you always have to remember you're going uh, into that swing field, so it's following the form there of that Latin swing, Latin, back and forth, kind of like Green Dolphin Street, uh, the traditional way of, of playing that if you've done that tune. Uh, the figures, you saw how I'm playing long and short sounds through this, so I do that a lot. Uh, it's good probably to go back and watch the beginning or the last take I'm going to do of it and watch how I capture that. But a lot of it's done with the hi-hat, like that, those kinds of fills where it's long, long, short. And I'll write those on the chart, those phrasings. A lot of times the arrangers leave that out, but that's actually the most important thing that you could have as a drummer to know which ones are long, which ones are short. So I would definitely try to write those in. Now a spot um, in this chart that's a little bit tricky is at 115 where we have this breakdown, which is common in Latin music. And we just have the bass player there playing the tumbao, and then you come in. So you could do a lot of things there, um, but I chose there to play kind of a sango groove, which is this. So as I go along in those bars, I get more and more intense. So first it's the bass, then the piano comes in. And then when the horns come in, uh, the brass at 131, I go over to the bell to make it even bigger. And there, if you want, you can play clave on your left foot like this. All right, that's pretty effective. Or you can just do upbeats or downbeats. You have a lot of choices there. Now, one thing about this chart is they use a conga player, which I would prefer that was not there, actually. But when you are playing with a conga player, uh, you don't play the toms too heavy. So more rely on the rim shot there. So you're almost doing like a timbali player where you're just using your hand on the drums instead of a stick because then you're just stepping on the conga parts. So, so try to be careful and be aware if you are playing with that. But most likely, most of the big band gigs you'll do, especially if they're jazz gigs, will not have a percussionist. But the Latin gigs will. So when you're doing that, you can play clave like this. Okay, but you don't want to always play the toms too loud when, you, when you're doing that. So you build that up, and then we get to 147, which is kind of the release, and that goes back into the bridge of the tune. And then we're headed out, as normal, on a lot of these tunes. So it gets bigger and bigger. At 173, it explodes back into the intro. And then we have this little section that is, is difficult because it's not written out uh, necessarily what you would play. So there I'm kind of just playing through a lot of that. And at 185, he's got some suggested fills. You can do those, all right? Uh, especially at 180, I'm sorry, 183, yes, suggested fills. At 185, he's got this uh, rumba clave there. Uh, you can play that if you want. I have a feeling that that was probably on the original. But uh, Pianist is playing two bars a time, Montuno there. You can play time or catch those figures. And then they do have a written out triplet thing. That happens there. Um, I would definitely suggest playing that because that's what the conga player is playing. So definitely stick to that. But after that, you can play whatever fills you want at the end. So I'll do it one more time for you. And um, I'll try to give you a, a little different view here, and I'll show you the chart as well.